located about three miles from George Washington's Mount Vernon estate in Virginia, is a reconstructed 18th century style whiskey distillery. American History TV visited to learn about Washington's distilling business on a day when the staff was making apple brandy. Most people have no idea that Washington not only was first in war, first in peace, but he was also one of the first in distilling. And he, uh, as it turns out, he operated a, a major distillery here and it was a, a very important part of the plantation economy. This is one of our five copper stills. Um, they uh, orient themselves kind of from my right to my left um, in order of size. The smallest one of the stills is about 62 gallons and the largest one's about 95 gallons. This is just the very top of a rather large um, semi-spherical top and then a, and then a conical shaped still. So, so the, the, the still itself is probably that big. This is a 95 gallons in here. It's the size of a bathtub in volume. I, I've, I've been coming here now for, for nigh on 10 years and, and one of the things that just that I was just fascinated with is that the level of detail that the archaeologists went to in uncovering the site and it, for me it was really fun because I'm not an archaeologist, I'm a chemical engineer and, and, uh, and I make whiskey for a living, but it was fun because even uneducated me could stand and look at the archaeological site and say, well, obviously the boiler went here, the fire boxes for the stills went there, this was the match floor. Um, and so, so the site laid itself out very nicely for us and, and a, a tremendous amount of information was easily discoverable. There are things that we learned about the operation here that are transferable into modern craft distilling. There are a number of uh, manuals on distilling that were written during this time period, the late 18th and early 19th century, that describe how you lay out a still house and you know, the most efficient way of doing things. And so we were able to, to look at those manuals and this all fits very well with what's going on you know, in sort of the larger distilling industry at the time. We really limit ourselves in, in, in how we operate here. We still boil water in the boiler. We still add hops when we're, when we're making the rye. We bucket water with wooden buckets. We, we stir with a wooden mash rake, use the, the old style fermenters. We don't use thermometers. Or, or hydrometers or saccharometers when we're, when we're making the judgments about adding the grain into the, to the mash tub. We just do it with visual and, and taste clues. We can understand why George Washington had the staff that he did here, because that's, that's the staff level that it takes us to do it. They did only 60 to 80 gallons of brandy. Uh, it was uh, on a couple of occasions. They did apple brandy one time and peach brandy and sold a little of it, but it seems the records indicate that most was used at the mansion. So Washington's are entertaining a lot of people. This is after the presidency, so he's just supplementing his other stores of alcohol with some homemade stuff. The whiskey is a different pro uh, proportion totally. This, this whole building was really built as a commercial distillery to make rye whiskey. So Washington's men in 1798, the first year this opened, made 4,500 gallons of rye whiskey. In 1799, almost 11,000 gallons. So, so this little brandy component is a very small measure compared to the whiskey business. But we've got lots and lots of plantation records, accounts. We know who was buying Washington's whiskey, how much they were paying for it. 60 cents a gallon, by the way, for the twice distilled stuff up to a dollar a gallon for the, for the good stuff that was distilled a few more times. And almost all of it was used here locally. The crew here, the folks that really made this work would have been African American slaves. There were six young uh, black men who were assigned to the distillery. And so James Anderson's son John and his assistant would have been directing it but all the work done here would have been done by those, by those six men. And it would have been a lot of work, uh, carrying grain around, doing the mashing, uh, then transferring the mash to the stills, doing all of that. So it was, it was a labor-intensive occupation. Normally in Washington's time they didn't age whiskey. It went in a cask, but it was an uncharred barrel. Went right to market um, and people drank it as a clear alcohol. And In our case what we do is we, when we make a whiskey run, we'll go ahead and bottle half of it unaged to keep in tradition of the history that was done here. 
and we'll sell that. And so we've sold three different batches of unaged rye whiskey the last two years. And usually we only have four or 500 bottles at a time available, and they usually sell out in a day. Um, but now, October 22nd, for the first time, we're offering the aged rye whiskey, which was, uh, so when we do those runs, we'll, we'll bottle half, as I said, unaged, and barrel the other half in a charred barrel, let it sit two years minimum, and then we'll sell it. So we, we bottled that earlier this spring, and uh, color is very nice, what you'd expect in a modern alcohol, amber color, really nice taste. So we're looking forward to people trying that. You can watch American Artifacts and other American History TV programs anytime by visiting our website, cspan.org history.